Mr. Jais. I'd like to make a point of personal privilege. You are in order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and ladies and gentlemen of the House. Today I'm going to speak. I don't do this a whole lot for a lot of folks. They probably know that. But uh, I want to speak on an issue I think is important, and it's the medical cannabis bill, which uh, there's a bill that's being looked at, Senate File 484, needs to pass with urgency. People who are suffering from epilepsy, Crohn's, PTSD, ALS, MS, Parkinson's, HIV, and other debilitating conditions need every safe treatment option available. Iowans and their families are watching as other states allow access to medical cannabis programs. Last year's historic Cannabis Dial Act fell short of allowing families to get access to the much needed help. I've talked with families that are suffering from diseases and they have shared the prescription drugs they are given are causing significant health issues to their loved ones. What I was is asking families to do is to drive out of state and lie about their residency to obtain the oil illegally. 23 states plus D.C. have a medical cannabis program. Several new states have proposed legislation in 2015, including Nebraska, Kansas, South Dakota, Minnesota, and Illinois. Right here in Iowa, the family of Maggie Sameski, a little girl from Janesville, Iowa, was forced to move to Colorado in order to seek proper and effective treatment for their daughter. Maggie, who was diagnosed with intractable epilepsy, has experienced seizures every single day, and on her worst days, her mother Rachel said she would suffer up to 500 seizures in a single day. After multiple pharmaceutical routes failed to have any effect on Maggie, the family was forced to move to Colorado where medical marijuana has been legal since 2000. Since then, Rachel has reported that Maggie's seizures have decreased by more than 75% after seeking treatment with medical marijuana. Cannabis is a proven, is proven. At least 33 controlled clinical trials conducted in the United States have shown significant and measurable benefits. Cannabis has been studied more than any FDA-approved drug. GW Pharma's June 17, 2014 results of a study on 27 children stated 44% had reduction in seizure frequency of greater than 50%, and a portion of those patients were reported to be seizure-free at the end of 12 weeks of treatment. They also reported the overall the medicine has been well tolerated. In addition to that, 68% of peer-reviewed studies done on the topic have found that medical marijuana have a positive impact on treating a large number of ailments, and in 8 in 10 doctors surveyed by the New England Journal of Medicine approve of medical marijuana. If you don't believe the doctors, a full 92% of people who have Use medical marijuana in California study reported that using the medical marijuana helped them greatly. Voters in Iowa support medical cannabis. In a recent Quinnipiac University poll released Tuesday of this week, voters back it by a margin of 87% to 11%. The U.S. Surgeon General says marijuana can be helpful other organizations that support medical cannabis include the American Academy of Family Physicians, the American, American Osteopathic Association, the American Public Health Association, the Multiple Sclerosis Society, the American Society of Addiction Medicine, the American Nurses Association, and many more. We've heard about abuse. Unless a person has a qualifying condition, they cannot obtain it through a dispensary, period. This has nothing to do with abuse or recreational use. The bill currently in this session provides tight regulation on the usage of medical marijuana and its variants so that the only usage of it is by people who strongly need it. States have legalized the use of medical cannabis to manage chronic pain and other conditions have a 25% lower rate of deaths 
from opiate drug overdose than states where medical marijuana is illegal, according to a new study. These findings suggest laws that make cannabis available to manage chronic pain and other illnesses may be useful in the U.S. health care system's uphill battle to reduce prescription painkiller abuse. One out of 100 babies born will develop epilepsy, and one out of three children will develop cancer. I, for one, don't want to see another person suffer needlessly when there is a treatment that can help that exist in nature. Please support the legislation. Iowans are asking us to lead on this issue. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. For what purpose does the gentleman from Warren seek the floor? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, would I be in order for a point of personal privilege? You are in order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, ladies and gentlemen of the House, this is the first time in three years I have done this. I think that a point of personal privilege is a, is a very important and special thing and should be used 